and welcome back to Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Many folks have spent more time cooking at home in the last 12 months during the pandemic. And I've been hearing more and more from my patients about pain while cooking, whether it be foot pain, knee pain, wrist or elbow pain, even neck and back pain. Today, we are joining Lisa Matsunaga, registered dietitian and cooking instructor in her home to talk healthy cooking and how to enjoy it without pain. But before we meet Lisa, let's learn some quick tips to get rid of pain while cooking in video number one. If you are suffering something called tennis elbow on the outside here or golfer's elbow from doing too much gardening or clipping or working with your hands, it can be very painful to lift a heavy pot off the stove or chop certain vegetables. So I wanted to show you some stretches you can do so that it can be pain for you while you cook. So you hold your elbow straight, stretch your wrist down here. You can hold for 20 or 30 seconds. You also flip it around and stretch the underside. Make sure you pull from here and not at your fingertips so that you get the wrist. You could also bend your elbow and stretch it this way as well, or here. You can put them together and stretch them this way or stretch them this way. The other thing you can do to help to strengthen is also work on your posture because if you're slouching forward like this, it puts your wrist extensors and flexors at a disadvantage. So it's important to Squeeze your shoulder blades back. You can clasp your hands behind your head and squeeze back. You can take a band if you have it and rotate outward. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Work on that good posture so that you can prepare your meals for yourself and your family without pain. Now I'd like to welcome Lisa Matsunaga, owner of wellnesskitchenhi.com. Welcome Lisa and thank you for coming on the show. Great to see you. It's great to see you. So, so tell me, how did you start wellnesskitchenhi.com? I want to know. Yeah, so um, I started Wellness Kitchen um, because I'm actually a registered dietitian. I'm not a professional chef, um, but I felt as a dietitian, I felt like there was a big gap between telling people what to eat and what people were actually doing at home. And so you know, you can give them all the facts and numbers that you, you know, that you want to a patient with, you know, high cholesterol or diabetes or something. Um, but what are they actually going to do with it at home? And so I wanted to um, show people, bring them into my home, show people, you know, these are the things you can cook that are easy, they're healthy, but they also taste really good. And you don't have to compromise taste for health. Yeah, and I can I can vouch for that because I had the opportunity to sample your wellness kitchen and I loved it. And I walked in and everything was set up. We had aprons and recipes. And the the highlight for me was making all the food, learning how to chop different things, and then knowing that you can put healthy food in something perceived as unhealthy, like a lava cake. And honestly, I've had lava cake so many times. But making it at your place, how you did it with all your healthy secrets was amazing because I liked it more than I did with the, you know, unhealthy, so to speak, version in the restaurant. So I was kind of blown away. I love to cook, but I was blown away by the addition of all the healthy ingredients that you can put in there that you normally wouldn't, I guess, you know? Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of fun experimenting. You know, if I have something in mind that I really want to make, you know, I have fun trying to make little changes that don't change it so much that, you know, it compromises the taste. But yeah, like the lava cake is actually, it's vegan, um, you know, very little added sugar because we have a secret ingredient in there. It's one of the most popular um, cooking class menu items, I would say. And yeah, people, you know, I get, I get people who come who would never choose a vegan dessert on a restaurant menu, but then they try it and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is vegan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fun. Yeah, it's amazing. So what, so what kind of people come to your classes? You know, I, um, yeah, I thought I would get a lot of, you know, people who have health issues or allergies and I do get those from time to time. And um, yeah, I, I can tailor menus. So if you have allergies or if you have, certain restrictions, um, then I can tailor the menu to you. Um, but I also just get a lot of people who, you know, we have couples or families. I had like a, you know, grandfather and granddaughter. Um, yeah, families who just want to make it like a, 
an intimate, memorable activity or a fun date activity. So yeah, it's been really fun, like meeting all the people, everyone's excited and they just feel very like, um, you know, they're not just here to like cook and, you know, learn about nutrition. It's not like a, a serious, you know, <laughs> lecture or anything. I, I We keep it fun and um, I take pictures of them and I send it to them after and so they, they can keep the memory. I love it. So to add to that list of uh, people who want to come, I did it with my coworkers and it was so fantastic because like during the pandemic, you know, we're going with the people that we're hanging out with the most as we're starting to kind of get back out there. And we work together, but we don't get to chit chat so much about other things. And we walked in and like you said, it's so relaxed and we were having fun pretty much from the minute we walked in there and you made us these little, um, what were they, popovers maybe? Mm -hmm. And the little <laughs> butter and it was just, it was amazing from the start. And I, I just, and then we started cooking and, and I know that like one of my problems as a physical therapist, because I'm hands-on so much and I've been doing it for so long, is I get a lot of wrist and hand pain and sometimes elbow pain just from overuse at work. And I do manage it with the stretches that I showed in video to number one and things like that. But you had showed me how to cut an onion that I loved because I think that's one of the things that, you know, all my life I've been cooking and I, I cut an onion this way and I do this that way. But you, all of us, I think, reinvent the wheel. And I liked how you showed it because it was, it was fun and easy and new. And I think that's a, just another thing that people get when they come to your cooking class is different ways to chop or different ways to squeeze or prepare your ingredients. I, I love that. I tried it here. I don't think I did it as well, but I, I really like that way. It's very simple and I don't have to think about it. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I'm glad that you, you tried it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's great. Yeah. I think I like to, you know, it's not just about the food and cooking. I take a lot of pride in you know, where I source my ingredients, how it's grown, you know, I try to do mostly organic and wholesome ingredients. And so I'm very picky about, you know, when I cook for myself and my husband, you know, I, 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 I always want the best ingredients, the freshest ingredients. And so I pass that on to my, my guests and I, you know, I just want them to have the best. So I also, you know, show them how to shop healthfully, what to watch out for, how to read, you know, read the labels or, um, you know, what, how do you know your olive oil is real olive oil? You know, where do your pumpkin seeds come from? All kinds of little tips here and there that I think people, you know, come away with learning a lot more than just cooking recipes. I bought the olive oil, by the way. And you know where I found it? I found it in Target, actually. I yeah, couldn't I actually happened to be in Target. I'm like, oh, let me just see what they have for olive oil since I learned so much about olive oil. And I bought the olive oil. I love it. That was great. Yay. Yeah. I, yeah. Target has a really good price for that. So I mentioned, uh, I mentioned the, the wrist and the elbow pain that I had suffered and so many of my patients during the pandemic were complaining of wrist pain, elbow pain, because they were cooking so much and they're also gardening and taking care of their kids. And I think their, their tasks were a little bit more or working from home and, and, you know, a not so good setup so that their wrists and hands are a little more compromised. So let's go to video number two, where I show a quick home remedy to get rid of your elbow and wrist pain. As far as a home remedy goes for that pain on the outside of your elbow or pain on the inside, it's very good to massage out the tissue. Use your other arm to massage it out. You can bend your wrist up and down while you do it. Same thing on the inside. Kneading this tissue is so good. It feels so fantastic to loosen that up so it doesn't have pain when you go to grip the can opener or the knife or the pot. So that is a great tip. Don't be afraid to massage yourself. I do it all the time. I rub myself, I stretch myself. It gets circulation to the tissues, helps restore them more to normal. So Lisa, let's, um, you have a little salad I see prepared there. I wanna see um, what we can do for the viewers with this beautiful salad. What are we looking at here? So, um... So I already prepped, this is a very simple salad dressing. Um, it only has four ingredients, but I, I love to make this at the beginning of the week. You know, you can make a big jar of it, keep it in the refrigerator and it'll last, you know, seven to 10 days. So it's a great way to ensure that you can eat, um, you know, vegetables all throughout the week and you don't have to worry about, you know, what's, what you have available to you. So I already prepped some onion here, just a fine mince. I actually use, I like to use shallots, um, but today, um, I don't have any shallots, so you can either use, you know, minced onion or minced shallot. And then I have a lemon here, 
it's kind of um, hard. Sometimes you get mel um, lemons that are hard and you feel like you're gonna have to squeeze really hard to get the juice out. And so what I do is I just sort of put my weight into it and I roll it. Oh. I to feel it getting soft, like all the little cells inside are breaking up. And you just turn it and roll it and turn it and roll it. So that's what I'm doing now. Now it's a lot more pliable. I could tell there's a lot of juice in there. Wow. Yeah, and then I'm just gonna juice it real quick. So. And I, I have, um, you know, exact measurements in my recipes that I print out and I give them to my guests. Um, but I'll just show you real quick. Usually I just eyeball it, um, you know, same amount of um, chopped shallot or onion and um, lemon juice. Sorry, some lemon. The onion and the shallot, they just add a really nice savoriness to it. I feel like if it's just lemon and olive oil, it's nice, but, um, you know, adding a couple extra little ingredients um, gives it a little more, um, yeah, that like nice um, zestiness and umami flavor. I like that, how you're massaging it. That seems very easy on the wrist versus as I tried to just grip the hard lemon and squish, like you smooth it out and then squish. This is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It's, you actually end up doing less work, I feel like you're not, you know, trying to get yeah, it. You're not, it looks easy, actually. <laughs> Yeah, so I have about, you know, equal amounts of lemon juice and chopped onion in here. And then I like to add some Dijon mustard. So this also adds another little layer of flavor, um, just about a teaspoon. And then some salt and pepper. I buy these, I don't know what you think, Chris, about these kind of uh, <laughs> twisting grinders, but. I think, they're, I think they're great. I think it's fine. I actually use them. I don't have problems. You're in good posture. You know, it's, it's that one's no problem for me. It's, the tougher thing for me is like a really tight lid that I can't get open. Or like um, if I have to uh, peel a lot of small things, I have <laughs> your hands and little garlic cloves are hard for me. Um, Chopping things that are hard, like a butternut squash or something like that, I bake them first and then I, or I microwave them or do something like that first to soften them beets because I can't chop them first until they're soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I use the microwave sometimes to soften kabocha or hard squashes to make it easier to cut because, yeah, it's so hard. It can be kind of dangerous trying to, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with a yeah, so, okay, so I have the Dijon mustard, I did the salt and pepper, and now I'm just going to add some olive oil, and I'm going to drizzle it and stir or whisk at the same time. And the Dijon mustard actually does double duty. It also um, helps to emulsify the dressing. So emulsifying just means it becomes a uniform um, consistency, so you're not getting the top layer of oil and then the water on the bottom, it all kind of comes together nicely. That's great. So like if you store this in the fridge for the week, will it separate or will it stay together? I think in the fridge after a while, it is gonna separate because okay. the um, olive oil will, will harden and it'll rise to the top. So yeah, so if I'm making a salad, I'll put the dressing out onto the counter first and then start making my salad. And by the time I'm done, then yeah, it's ready to go. Okay, good. Yeah. So I'll show you this in a second. I'm excited about this because I'm getting hungry and I like making homemade dressings. I'd spent some time in Italy a few times actually, and their salad dressing to me tasted very um I don't know, it was like it was perfect and literally all it was was olive oil and salt and lemon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean when you have good produce, right? You don't you don't wanna cover it up with heavy dressings or really right. Um, strong flavors. So yeah, this is also, see how it's like starting to emulsify? Um, yeah, so it's all, it's kind of creamy looking actually. So yeah, that's basically it. And then, you know, you can have a little salad here. I have some strawberries, some uh, watermelon radish, avocado, um, and some pistachios. And so this is sort of a spring slash summer salad. Hold up the watermelon radish. I don't know that I've ever had one of those before, but it looks so great. It looks like a little baby watermelon. 
Yeah. Radishes. I've never had a watermelon radish. Yeah, they, I mean, this is a pretty small one, but some of them are huge and it's just adds such a dramatic, you know, crunch and then the color and um, it's great, great for you. So um, when I taste, um, when I test the dressing, uh -huh. I actually like to use the, the part of this, you know, a component of the salad when I'm um, testing the dressing. So that way, you know that, you know, okay, this is how it's going to taste all when it all comes together versus just tasting the dressing by itself. And so usually I'll take like a lettuce leaf and I'll dip it in there. Give it a taste. It's like, oh, then, you know, you need a little salt, you need a little more lemon or olive oil, and then you can just make it your own. I so, love it. Yeah, yeah. That's, it. <laughs> that's so that's so simple. That is so simple. So this is one of the recipes. What um? How do people find out for your your menus? Do they choose a menu online? Do you custom cater a menu to them? How does that work if they want to do a, a cooking class with you? Yeah, so you can go to uh, wellnesskitchenhi.com, and then you can click on menus, and there's um, all the pre-made menus there for you. Um, but you you know if you have things like an allergy or you don't like a certain uh, menu, menu item, you can mix and match uh, for the most part. You just um, send me a message and then we can go from there and you know, everything is fully customizable. Yeah, I love that. So, so we have a question actually from a viewer. Thanks for sending that. It says, I was diagnosed with arthritis two years ago and have had to tolerate gradually increasing pain. I started taking turmeric as a supplement about two months ago and have found it to be very effective to relieve back, hip, knee, and ankle pain. Would you recommend it or are there precautions to take? Do you, I'm not a doctor. And so like with supplements like that, uh, people can try it. And I, with turmeric, actually, I have a lot of patients who it hasn't helped. And then some of them who it has helped with, um, I feel like uh, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis, um, vasculitis, those sort of, those people with those type of things have said, wow, I feel like it makes a difference, but do you use turmeric in your cooking other than making curries or do you have any knowledge as a dietitian of how to use turmeric to help for those things? Yeah, I mean, all of those spices are actually really good for um, and their anti-inflammatory properties. So cinnamon, turmeric, ginger, um, cumin, all of those are, are, are all great. Um, the only thing I would caution with supplements is that, um, you know, supplement companies, you're not really 100% sure what's in it. There's been, you know, lots of um, studies or investigations where they find out that what they say on the bottle is not actually what's in there. And so that's one thing that worries me about get, um, buying turmeric as a supplement. I would, you know, try to use it in your cooking or try to use fresh, um, fresh turmeric, which we're very lucky in Hawaii to, to have at the grocery store and using fresh you know, that's going to have all the, all of its um, health benefits and um, anti-inflammatory properties in there. You're not really worrying about, you know, how it's been processed, what else they add in there, or, you know, they, they can do all kinds of things in the manufacturing process. So I feel like trying to get to the whole version of whatever you're, you're taking is always the best. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So let me ask you now, because we're talking about pain and healthy cooking, right? Do you, have you ever had any pain when cooking? Cause that's kind of what you do. Yeah, I know. Uh, well, the way that I met you was I, I started having some back pain. It was after a, a fitness class where I was doing a lot of um, reps with weights and um, you know, it was, I thought it would just go away on its own, but it was months and months and I was still feeling it. So that's how I met you, um, you know, going to your physical therapy office. And, um, you know, you guys showed me some great exercises and stretches that I still do today. Um, I still use the foam roller to like stretch out my arms and, you know, and I'm always, I'm much more conscious of my posture now, like when I'm cooking or driving or at the computer. Yeah. You, you taught me so many great tips that I, I still follow to this day and yeah, my back feels great now. I'm, I'm so happy to hear that. And I'm so glad, like what you just said was perfect. Cause I think like still doing it, but also being more mindful of your posture. It's one of those things that I like to help people form the habit of, of good posture because we don't know what we're doing until you have pain or someone tells you. And once someone tells you, it's like, oh, wait, all you need is a little bit more attention to posture so tissues don't get strained. And I, I love that you kind of put it into your routine. That's great. 
Yeah, it's been so helpful. Thank you. So I have a couple tips. I did a quick video last night. If we go to video number three of some things you can do to get rid of upper body pain while you're cooking. Right, so you're bending your neck forward, you're chopping, you're stirring, you're cooking. Everything is looking down, which takes a toll on your neck. It takes it out of its natural curve. So what do you do? You can stand up, squeeze your shoulder blades back, push your head into your arms, or you can go over to the doorway, put your arms out in a doorway and lift your chest and breathe in. Stretch out your chest, tuck your chin down, make a long neck. And also you can go up against your door and just do some chin nods to keep your head, your back, your butt against the wall. Nod your chin down and stretch out all these muscles. You can squeeze your shoulder blades back to touch the door. Or you can rotate your hands on squeezing your shoulder blades so that you don't have neck pain while you enjoy cooking. I like showing uh, those videos of simple things you can do and simple places you could do them, like in a doorway or against your wall. And uh, I also had a lot of people complaining of foot and knee pain while they were cooking because they were doing a lot of yard work. And during the pandemic, a lot of people are doing more than 10,000 steps. I think that was like two shows ago I did the 10,000 steps is causing your pain because people had like one foot that was um, arch collapsing or a knee that was diving in. And all of a sudden they're standing cooking which is what they normally did for their family, except for they're having all this pain. And here in Hawaii, we don't wear shoes in the house. And so that has become a problem. So I've been educating a lot of people to go get uh, some sort of shoe or, or house slipper that is only in the house. So when you're standing cooking on your tile floor, it has an arch support here. So if we go to video number four, I'll talk a little bit about that. Many people have been complaining of knee and foot pain while they're standing and cooking all day for their family and for their friends. And during the pandemic, a lot of us were cooking uh, more than normal. And so one of the things that's important to do, especially if you live in Hawaii and you're used to taking your shoes off before you enter the home, is get a pair of house slippers like this that have a little bit of arch support. You can only wear them in the house, but here's where the arch support is. It's important to stabilize your arch while you are standing there. And another thing too, is if you're standing and you're cooking with one foot turned out like this, that could cause excess strain on your arch here. So you wanna turn your feet straight and you also wanna kinda of grip the floor, grip your shoes, curl your toes in that way to help support your arch. You can also roll your arch over a tennis ball to massage out the plantar fascia to help yourself feel better while you cook. Let's go to video number five where I show you how to do that. I love this exercise. I use it for myself. I'm on my feet all day and I love to cook as well. And so I just sit and massage my foot over. This is a golf ball. You can use a tennis ball, a lacrosse ball, any sort of ball, a frozen water bottle people will use as well, just to relieve the tension in your arch, especially if you have been doing more walking or exercise outside. So Lisa, um, how can people get in touch with you to book a class? Like other, they go to your website? Yeah, you can go to my website. Um, that's wellnesskitchenhi.com. You can also go to my Instagram. It's wellnesskitchenhi. And um, you can see all kinds of photos from past classes, things I've been cooking, um, things that are on the, on the cooking menus. And I just wanted to mention that um, Right now, all the classes are private, so I'm not mixing groups. So, you know, you're going to have your own class with just you and your, you know, your loved ones. And maybe in the future, I'll do some open classes where you can mix groups. But right now, every, um, every class is private. So, yeah, two to five people. I love it. Two to five people. That's great. So I don't want to forget, we had talked about standing and cooking and using these house slippers. And you mentioned that you had a gel mat that you used. Do you I have see. it there? Yeah. Do you want it? Do you want to yeah, see it? See it? Is it, is it okay? I want to see it. I don't know how, um, it's kind of dark in here, but I have one. Okay. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, that's yeah. okay. Oh, I see it. It's dark brown. It's dark, yeah. I have one so over my sink, so when I'm washing dishes. And then I also have one down here for um, when I'm cooking over the stove. And does that help with your feet? Oh, yeah. It's yeah, because I'm also on my feet all day too, whether I'm shopping or cooking or teaching. And so it, it helps my feet feel so much better. I wish my whole house was covered in these masks. 
You know what? That's a great idea for like a flooring industry. No, that's great. And I also wanted to mention for, for taller people too, such as myself, and I have another physical therapist friend who is very tall, who was mentioning how he opens up his legs wide when he's chopping. So he doesn't have to hunch over and bend down to the countertop type and countertop height. And I don't realize that I have to do that. I'm not that tall, but at work on the laptop services, I do the same thing. I spread my legs wide so that I can not have to hunch over the laptop. And uh, when he mentioned that, I thought, oh yeah, I got to tell people that because it's something that you might not think about that can help your neck and back. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, so thank you so much, Lisa, for coming on the show. This was great. I can't wait to make your salad dressing. And thank you to thinktechhawaii.com for allowing us to be here with you today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And remember, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Aloha, everyone.